Greetings everyone, I'm Tai Muin uh, from the Department of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, uh, University of Chittagong. I feel really honored to be here uh, presenting my research in such a wonderful platform like uh, uh, ISCB Student Council Webinars 2021. So before starting with the presentation, I'm mourning for all of the departed souls across the world due to COVID-19 pandemic and also the people around who were affected these times across the globe. This pandemic actually has taken away millions of lives, but also augmented the significance of virus, vaccine, vaccine informatics, or other uh, research uh, among the general crowd all over the world. Yet, it's a matter of relief that people around the world have started having access to the vaccination programs and hopefully we will recover this dark period uh, soon in the upcoming days. Today, I'm going to present our research, which is based on vaccine informatics. Since, um, the, prevalence, uh, since the prevalence of the virus uh, was appeared, we have been trying to contribute to the betterment of the mankind from our side. And from that perception, we have designed a subunit vaccine against the virus using immunoinformatics. And today, without making any delay, I want to get into the topic and, uh, on how we have done it. So, as everybody knows so far, uh, the coronavirus disease is caused by a virus known as a severe acute respiratory syndrome 2. In short form, it's called SARS-CoV-2. This disease was originated in China in December 2019. COVID-19 is a highly contagious disease that as of uh, August 14, 2020, has been, it's, it has been disseminated in around 20, 230 countries and territories all over the world. Not only that, it has put an end to more than hundreds of thousands of lives with nearly 30 million infected cases by the time. A pace with the drug development, several pharmaceutical and educational institutions from numerous countries have demonstrated their engagement in developing COVID-19 vaccines passionately after the sequenced genome of the virus has been released officially on 11th January of 2020. However, almost all of the vaccines were still not evaluated with efficacy. In our study, a blueprint of the epitope-based vaccine was de uh, designed, which might produce substantial immune response towards SARS-CoV-2. We have targeted the spike glycoprotein, eclucapsid uh, phosphoprotein, membrane glycoprotein, and the envelope protein of the virus. Coronavirus spike glycoproteins promote and facilitate entry into cells, and uh, are the, they are the prime target of the antibodies. The nucleocapsid phosphoprotein is vital for packaging the viral genome into a helical ribonucleocapsid, and it plays an elementary role during viral self-assembly. Also, membrane and envelope proteins are important for viral entry, replication, and the particle assembly within the human cells. Therefore, these four, uh, four proteins were used as potential targets in the study to design the vaccine with the purpose of inhibiting these viral proteins, which should interfere with the viral life cycle. So in our methods and met uh, materials and methods, uh, we have followed the methodology starting with the selection of the virus and retrieval of the protein sequence using NCBI and Unibro database. After that, we went for antigenicity and physiochemical property analysis of the, of the selected proteins, which was followed by the most important part of the research, the epitope prediction using IEDB server. So we have predicted T and B cell epitopes, which were rigorously assessed for antigenicity, allergenicity, toxicity, conservancy, human homology, transmembrane topology, and the cytokine inducing ability. Finally, we have considered the best selected epitopes based on uh, several criteria, for instance, uh, antigenicity, non-allergenicity, non-toxicity, and the uh, conservancy of the epitopes. Well, after the CV vaccine um, is constructed using linkers and adjuvant, it was gone through physiochemical property analysis again, secondary and tertiary, uh, and then the secondary and tertiary structure prediction, and finally, the validation and refinement of the tertiary structure. Following that, molecular docking, molecular dynamic simulation, and the immune simulation studies were also conducted. After the pro prodigious analysis, exploring the interaction between the vaccine and the viral proteins, um, the vaccine was finally subjected to the codon adaptation and in silico cloning. Well, in our results and discussion, um, at first, the four proteins, um, as I have mentioned above, um, uh, were selected, uh, and then the protein sequences were retracted from the NCBI database. Um, here in this table, um, this table lists the GenBank accession IDs, either of the selected protein sequences. Well, the vaccine has been constructed using the best selected epitopes, as I have uh, 
mentioned about, uh, mentioned previously, um, which could be used to fight against the selected viral strains effectively. So beta defensin three uh, was uh, used as adjuvant, and the Padre sequence was also used for the vaccine construction to increase its efficacy. So three linkers were also used at their appropriate proposition, uh, positions uh, during conjugated during uh, conjugating the epitopes um, to form the vaccine. The CV vaccine uh, was predicted to be a potent antigen as well as a non-allergen. In the physiochemical probability analysis of the vaccine, a high theoretical PI, a good half-life, and uh, um, a good uh, half-life of, uh, um, of the vaccine in E. coli culture system were predicted. Moreover, the vaccine construct was also found to be quite stable as well as soluble upon overexpression in E. coli cell culture system. Furthermore, it had an aliphatic index of 114.48 and a quite low gravity value of uh, minus 0 0.884. Then the most interesting part of the research, the molecular docking analysis was conducted, which wound up with an impressive result, yielding high free energy with a free with a very strong interaction between the toll-like uh, receptors of the um, host cell and the vaccine construct. Here in this figure, the interactions between the vaccines and uh, TLRs are clearly shown with the interacting atoms colored in purple. After the successful docking, simulation study resulted with some efficient evidences that proved the potentiality of the virus. MD simulation was conducted on the vaccine TLR um, docked complexes and uh, MD simulation of the protein complex, which pointed towards uh, the fact that all the docked structure were quite stable throughout the experiment. Here, the graph shows the result of the MD simulation of the CV vaccine TLR-8 complex. Here in, this, uh, in the graph A, um, I mean the RMSD graph, uh, it shows that um, the structure had maintained a stable, uh, stable of 0 0.5 nanometer deviation with minimum fluctuation. And in the graph B, it showed that um, uh, is uh, the RMS fluctuations of all the atoms about its average uh, average position. The peaks and the dips in the graph uh, denote uh, the flexibility of the corresponding region in the molecular structure. Finally, the graph C shows the radius of guidation. The immune simulation study predicted that the SV, um, I mean, the SARS-CoV vaccine might produce an immune response which is consistent with a typical and natural immune system. The study revealed that after injections, the primary immune response against the vaccine was predicted to stimulate significant as indicated by the gradual increase in the levels of uh, different immunoglobulins that are shown in the figure. Here, the graph uh, A shows the immunoglobulin and the immunocomplex response to the CV vaccine inoculation by the black line, and the specific subclasses are indicated by the colored lines. The graph B shows the rise in the B cell population over the course of the three injections. Graph C indicates uh, the increment in the B cell population by state over the course of vaccination. Graph D demonstrates uh, the increase in the plasma B population over the course of the injections. And graph E depicts the enhancement of the helper T cell population over the course of the three injections. The graph A finally shows the increment in the helper T cell population per state over the course of the vaccination. And here, graph G illustrates the elevation in the regulatory um, T lymphocyte over the course of the three injections. And uh, graph H um, shows the increment in the cytotoxic T lymphocyte population over the course. And uh, graph I displays the increase in the active cytotoxic T lymphocyte population per state over the course. And uh, uh, graph J shows the rise in the uh, shows the rise in the active dendritic cell population per state over the course. And uh, uh, K demonstrates the increment in the uh, macrophage population per state over the course. And finally, graph L shows that shows the augmentation in the concentration of uh, different types of cytokines over the course. And finally, in the immune simulation, we have observed um, um, a gradual increase in the in, in, in all the analysis. So, uh, for in silico cloning and plasmid construction. At first, the protein sequence of the CV vaccine was adapted by the jacket Sava, and then the codon adaptation index um, was found to be 0 0.903, which indicates that uh, the DNA sequence contained a higher population of the codons that are most likely to be used in the target organism, I mean, the E. coli strain K12 that were used. Um, 
for the um, efficient production of the CV vaccine. Also, a good GC content of 56.79% was also recorded for the adapted sequence. After codon adaptation, the predicted DNA sequence of CV vaccine was inserted into the peptide vector plasmid as seen over here. So, therefore, the study revealed uh, the vaccine construct as a potential candidate. Nevertheless, the vaccine construct must undergo wet lab based uh, inception for regulating its safety, usefulness, and competency. We hope that inhibition of the selected proteins of the virus would consequently hold the viral entry and thus, and thus uh, the life cycle of the virus will be prohibited. That's, Ill, that's all for today. Thank you so much for having patience in hearing to my research talk. Thank you.